Good evening. Welcome to the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, and welcome to the Millennium Stage. The Millennium Stage is the Kennedy Center's free performance series featuring theater, music, dance, and so much more, 365 days a year. These performances are made possible by a generous donation from Target. If you are ever unable to visit us in person, please do visit us online at kennedy-center.org, where you will find the night's performance broadcast to you live in the privacy and comfort of your own home. If you also ever wish to view past performances, please also visit us on our website, where you will find thousands of carefully archived past performances for your view viewing pleasure at your fingertips. Tonight's performance features VT Dance, Vincent E. Thomas in Shadows. Without further ado, please sit back and look around you and enjoy Shadows. There were gods and there was the sky and the sun and the stars and the moon and the earth and this was good the gods thought hmm blowing breath into the nostrils of my ancestors my great-grandparents my mother my father into me My head, my heart, my lungs, my brain, my eyes, my face, color, sexuality, precious, divine, beautiful, complete. This is good.
In Oscar Wilde's *The Fisherman and His Soul*, the fisherman was determined to part ways with his soul as a condition placed upon him by a mermaid whom he loved. The soul begged and pleaded for the fisherman to reconsider his decision. Though, when it became apparent to the soul that his plea could not prevail over the affections of the fisherman. He requested that, in his dismissal, his host not send him forth into the world without a heart—a request which the soul was ultimately denied. Now, free from his fleshly counterpart, the soul experienced the world in lack of fear, in power, and in wealth. His condition was what I imagine Lord Henry Wooten, another of Wilde's many characters and by far a personal favorite, would have held in high regard. This is because the soul did not deny himself of worldly pleasures, and Lord Henry declared, "The soul grows sick with longing for the thing it has forbidden to itself." However, despite all the soul gained during his time of independence, he relentlessly strived to reconcile with the fisherman. Our dear, unfortunate friend, the soul. For years, he served someone who all too conveniently tossed him aside. It's a pity that even when he held the world in his hands, he was unable to move past that one person. Dear soul, I pray one day you find the dignity to tell that fisherman to bug off. I stood. I stood in the shadow. I stood in the shadow of God, a God of all things, of creation, of destruction. Zeus, Poseidon, Hades. Aries, a god of ability, possibility, antiquity, tranquility, Apollo, Hermes, Hephaestus, Hermes, Zeus, a god who sees all things, hears all things. Smells, tastes, and touches all things. Yeah, a god who knows. I understood. I understood in those shadows faith, humility, empathy, strength, love, loyalty, curiosity, fear. More often than not, I saw that in the revenge of the 
that we prize very I stand. I stand in the shadow. I stand in the shadows of Buddha, Gandhi, Washington, Jefferson, Martin, Kennedy, Hitler, Baldwin, Marley, Nixon, Nat, Fela, Belafonte, Invisible, Bush, Cosby, Dahmer, Langston, Cook, Milk, OJ, MJ, MJ, X, Tiger, Barack, my father, my father, my father, father, dad, legend. I understand that if I don't stand for something, I fall. John Bridges and Brian Curtis's 50 Things Every Young Gentleman Should Know, revised and expanded. Chapter 22, Winning Well. You do say good game to the other team or person you are competing against. You don't say loser or sorry you played such a lame game or anything else that will make your competitor feel bad. You do say thank you when someone compliments your skill. You don't say, oh, I could have done better, or I was holding back, or anything other than thanks. A gentleman knows that being a good winner also means having good sportsmanship. <laughs> As a child, I insisted time and time again that I had absolutely no interest in playing sports. Father, however, consistently pressured me to do so until I was ultimately forced to join a soccer team. In hindsight, I suspect this was his attempt to prevent his son from developing into an eventual butt pirate. However, it, it does not make much sense to me to place your possible homosexual male child among a group of other very physically active and very sweaty boys who endearingly smack one another's bottoms as a means to ensure one's heterosexual orientation. You know, <laughs> the irony of it all is that I was never very skilled at sports that require one to play with balls.
关公射大雕。My son, these are some of my wishes. Wishes and desires for you as a man growing up in this bustling world. Some say the following would make the perfect specimen of a man. The knowledge and intellect of my father. The courage and determination of Captain Justin Powell. The concern and work ethic of your grandfather, Roberto Guerrero. The love for your mother that I have. The arm of Tom Brady. The feet of David Beckham. The swing of Ted Williams. The form of Larry Bird. The talent of Josh Groban. The moves of Michael Jackson and the stamina and unimaginable luck of Liam Neeson. Throughout your life, you will hear a wide range of theories and beliefs on what makes a real man. A man knows when the time is right to fight and when the time calls for self-control. A man shows concern for others, is always a gentleman, and never allows others determine what he believes in. A man enjoys life. Carpe diem. Start a standing ovation. Sing out loud. Try new things. Play an instrument. Be honest in love. Set extraordinary goals for yourself. Make a speech. Take pictures. Volunteer when no hands are raised. Stand up for what is right, even when it is not popular. Never stop learning and push yourself to always do better. Never go through life wondering what if. A man sheds tears, says I love you, smiles, gives a firm handshake, looks into the eyes of the person he is speaking to and lends an ear to a friend in need. If constructive criticism is given, do not be quick to lash out. 
See if there is any truth you can apply to your life. Live within your means. Do not let others limit your ability and tell you that you could never do that. A man puts his head on his pillow at night with a clean conscience. A man should not be judged by the amount of money or possessions he has, but a real man is judged by his character and work ethic. I love you, son. I love you, son. I love you, son.
Mill Griffin is a former American professional boxer, considered one of the greatest of all time. However, his career and his life is defined by one bout. His 1962 welterweight championship fight against Cuban Benny the Kid Perret. Now throughout Emil Griffith's life and his career, there were stories, there were rumors, there were allegations regarding his sexuality. Was he heterosexual? Was he homosexual? Was he bisexual? Did he like men? Did he like women? Did he like both? No one knew for sure, but everyone had their story. Benny Perret had his story too. Prior to their bout at the weigh-ins, he called Emil Griffith a maricón. Maricón is the Spanish equivalent to the word faggot. Emil Griffith was so enraged by this insult that he lashed out at Perret. The only reason he didn't get his hands on him is because his trainers held him back. During their bout in the 12th round, Emil Griffith caught Perret and knocked him against the ropes. Because of their positioning, it looked as if Perret was still standing up straight even though he was clearly unconscious. But Emil Griffith proceeded to go with punch after uncontested punch until Perret fell down to the canvas. He was declared the winner by knockout and regained the welterweight championship of the world. After the bout, he said, I'm glad to be the welterweight champion again. And I hope Perret is feeling very good right now. It didn't take long for him to find out the severity of the situation as Benny Perret fell into a coma soon after that fight. Emil Griffith tried to visit Perret in the hospital, but was turned back. As he left the hospital, he was jeered. 10 days later, Benny Perret died of his injuries. It didn't take long for Emil Griffith to start receiving death threats and hate mail from fans of Perret, who were thoroughly convinced that he purposely killed Perret in the ring. Much later in his life, Emil Griffith opened up about his sexuality. He admitted that he liked both men and he liked women. He also admitted that since that night, he had nightmares. He had difficulty sleeping because he was haunted by what happened between he and Benny Perret in that boxing ring. The life of Emil Griffith can be found in the documentary, Ring of Fire, The Emil Griffith Story. So we come now to the challenge part of this evening's performance. Just as our drum challenge challenge each other about masculinity and the identity and the definitions of such, we're going to invite you to participate for the next four minutes in wrestling and talking about this idea of masculinity challenged. Part of the work that you see here this evening was inspired by table talks, a chance for small groups to come together and discuss a topic such as the identity and definition of masculinity. So I'd like to invite the hosts now to stand up uh, in your sections. And for the next four minutes, we invite you, the audience, to tackle and tackle this question of, when was the time your masculinity was challenged? Or you challenged someone else's masculinity? So for the next four minutes, share in your small groups. Your hosts will collect your thoughts. And then we'll go on with the rest of this evening's performance. Thank you.
So ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for participating in this small sample of our table talk. And as your hosts are bringing your ideas forward to inform the next uh, couple of sections, uh, I invite you to turn your attention to our next piece in the performance.
masculinity meanings we derive from our interactions with ourselves each other and our world constantly changing throughout time as a result of cultural constructs and the importance that we place on messages it's historically shifting it's the foundation of our modern definition of power strength and control shaped by our fathers our adult male figures and during our formative years as Malcolm X once said and Martin Luther King the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands at times of moments of comfort and convenience but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy we challenge our friends we challenge our family we challenge authority we challenge to solidify our place in the world we challenge to dispel myths and to hide our truth we challenge when we hate we challenge when we love we challenge out of ignorance and shadows and sometimes in the full light of day but the next time your masculinity is challenged or you challenge someone else's masculinity how will you embrace and frame that moment and reclaim that power to make it your own I'm excited. I'm finally making moves as an adult, okay? And this was a long time coming for me because I'm old. I know you can't tell, but I'm old. You can't tell because black don't crack, okay? But I'm old, okay? That you can't tell, but I'm 65, okay? I am. And I'm excited because I'm finally making moves as an adult. I just moved out of my mama's house. So I'm excited about that. No, don't clap. Don't do that. Don't clap, okay? Cuz I live with my sister now. And um <laughs> baby steps okay and it's really hard because uh, my uncle he just moved in the house with us and he just came, he just got out of jail so you know he thinks he's a muslim now and um but you know he's not you know he'd be sneaking eating the pork chop sandwiches and all that type of stuff so please but he hates gay people right and it's hard for me because i'm gay right i can't even do simple stuff around him like make a glass of Kool-Aid he has my Kool-Aid he has it because he thinks the Kool-Aid is making me sweet you know that type of stuff that's the type of stuff I'm talking about right there. He messes with my friends. I bring them over all the time, you know, cuz one of my best friends, she's a lesbian. You got to keep a lesbian around because you never know when the car might break down or something, okay? So <laughs> keep a nice lesbian around. Car breaking down. I don't got time for that, okay? And every time I bring her over, he's always like, "Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get her." Oh, I'm gonna get her. I'm gonna get her. I'm like, "No, you can't get her because she likes women. That's not gonna happen." No, no, no I'm gonna tell you what her problem is, all right? Her problem is she's had a lot of messed up relationships with men. So she think that by becoming a lesbian, 
that's going to solve all her problems. Which I can tell y'all is a bunch of BS, okay? Because I'm going to put it like this. I am a gay man, okay? And I've had plenty of messed up relationships with men. And none of that ever turned me into a lesbian, okay? <laughs> so I don't know what the issue is. A lot of people, they feel like being gay is a choice. And like, I'm here to tell you, being gay is not a choice because I know I've always been gay since I was little. I got my friend, she's been gay since she was little. Her brother, he's gay. All their cousins gay. Their aunt just came out of the closet. But now, that pushed it right there, the aunt coming. Because I was like, Dad, how many of y'all is it? You know, by the time the rest of y'all finish, you know, y'all not even going to be able to have family reunions. Y'all going to have to have gay pride parades. You know, it's just, <laughs> how many of y'all is it? You know, so a lot of people, they feel like being gay is a choice. Being gay is not a choice because I'm black and gay, okay? You hear that? Black and You can't make that up, okay? You know, I never woke up late one night, you know, like, oh, hmm, something's missing. I'm black, I'm a man, I want to be this. You know, I never did that, you know. So a lot of people say, well, okay, well, if, if being gay is not a choice, then what happened? And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe my mother ate too many Skittles while she was pregnant. I don't know. Something happened, you know. And it's like I'm a double minority. So, you know, it's like double minority. So it's like two stereotypes I got to live up to. It's like I got to roll a good blunt without breaking a nail. You know what I mean? And that's not easy, you know. So now we got hip-hop culture, you know, and in hip-hop culture, you know, that kind of reinforces this image of what masculinity is supposed to be, you know. So men have to disrespect women. You can't be gay. You have to hate gay people, all this type of stuff. And now, you know, because at first it was the word faggot. That's a horrible word. But now they say no homo. Have Y'all know about no homo, right? I think it's one of the most ridiculous terms that anybody can use. Basically, what people do with it is straight guys, they take it, they say some of the gayest stuff you've ever heard in your life, and as long as they reinforce it with no homo, it makes it okay. So you see them on the basketball court, oh yeah, your balls look real good in those sweatpants, I should let you put one on my forehead, no homo, no homo. You know, that's <laughs> ridiculous, okay? The church, you know, the church, the politicians, and recently Barack Obama came out in support of gay marriage, which I think is great because now I can go find me a man and have my dream wedding in Popeyes, okay? I'm excited about that. But, you know, a lot of these people, their reasonings for it is ridiculous, you know, because you hear a lot of them. I, I was looking at the news, and this pastor got on, he was like, no, those gays, they don't deserve to get married. That type of stuff is going to destroy the earth. I look at the news, and I see these men in sundresses. And I'm like, really? Sundresses, really? That's, that's, that's the whole thing? You're at gay pride parades and sundresses, really? Because I don't know about y'all, okay? But I'm, maybe this is just me. But after looking at the news for two and three hours and seeing, you know, kids get shot on the street, you know, a recovering economy, a frail health care system, you know, lack of education and people going hungry, I think it's kind of refreshing to see something as simple as a man in a sundress, okay? <laughs> Like this, say that. 